Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Imperator Rome. My name is Corbin. We're going to be playing as Rome, probably for just this first playthrough of Imperator Rome. Uh, yeah, I felt like I'd do something a little bit basic. And I know I'm a little bit late, okay? Calm down. It's been like a couple days since Imperator has come out. But it's been a little bit busy. Yeah, uh, a little bit busy, yeah. So uh, we're going to be playing Imperator Rome today. Um, you know, basically just as Rome. The basic country that basically everyone else plays and i've said basic about six times already so see how many more we can get that uh get of that before we start this episode now we are a an aristocratic republic our religion is hellenic and of course our culture is roman inside of the latin group now uh oh boy this game it has its ups it has its downs all right i'm gonna be fair about it i do enjoy playing this game all right let's start off with that that's a good thing um but there are a lot of things that i know some of some of which are changing in like a few days maybe even tomorrow who knows a lot of things that are going to be changed in the future, which are going to make it more enjoyable. But as of right now, I'd say there are a couple things that can be improved upon, which uh, we might touch on a little bit as we, you know, begin to play here. So, uh, first of all, we can choose between either train map mode or political map mode um, as our one that we're going to be going with for like pretty much 100% of the time because they're pretty much the same thing except the train map mode. Uh, it's just an improved one, um, improved version of the one they have for EU4, where it's pretty much just like, you know, it has like the borders with the train stuff. Which, you know, I'll see a lot of people on, which is it's great and stuff, but it does like to, you know, chug a little bit of your frame as you go in and out. As you can probably see here, I'm dropping maybe down to 15-ish frames as I go in between. So it's not a whole lot of fun. Uh, we can go with political map mode, which does roughly the same thing, but it sort of like paints, you know, the color uh, a little bit more EU4-like um, when you're down in here. I mean, there's, you don't really see much of a difference up here. When you're down here, you really do see the big difference. Uh, I might want to say with, I don't know if this doesn't really matter though. Uh, we have a, a lot of study, cities, a lot of vassals, a lot of stuff. You guys have probably um, known what this works and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to go on Iron Man probably. Because like, dude, why the hell not? Um, I've played Rome enough times at this point. Uh, we can go with hard or whatever. I think I'm just going to stick with normal. Um, but yeah, we're going to go with Iron Man mode and begin. We're going to have to name it something though. Uh, we're going to name it... We're going to name it uh, Rise of the Republic probably. Uh, we can't have space though, can we? Oh, we can. Okay. Rise of the Republic. So that's going to be the name of this Let's Play. Save to Cloud. No, I think I'm going to be fine. Rise of the Republic. There we go. Alrighty then. Uh, Senatus Populisque Romanus. Uh, I probably don't know how to pronounce Latin. I don't know who actually does in this uh, day and age, but some, some probably does. Anyways, for over 20 years, the nascent Roman Republic has fought a harsh campaign against the Samnite people to the south. Although victory often seemed far from grasp, the war ended in Rome's favor, resulting in the liberation of the important Greek city of Neapolis. The Samnites, however, have retreated to lick their wounds, are far from defeated. In the north, the Etruscan people eye the expansion of the Republic with apprehension. To the south, myriad Greek city-states plot behind one another's back, all while appealing to the benefactors in Greece for aid. On the far-flung islands of Sicily, the foreign invasion of the mysterious Carthaginian Empire threatens to upset the precarious balance of power in the region. Will Rome rise victorious or fall to internal strife and barbaric hordes? The fate of the Republic rests in your hands. For the Republic! There we go, that's a nice little intro to Rome here. Um, yeah, you know, it sort of gives a little scope of what's going on here. Uh, there are over 7,000 provinces in this game, uh, by the way, so... That's why things are probably not going to run too well, and I have noticed it doesn't run very well. In fact, it goes as far as to say it runs pretty much like shit, but... <clears throat> We're going to ignore that for the time being. Uh, out of what I have knowledge of in this game, there are a lot of things you can do here uh, with armies and stuff. Not a lot of people understand how all this stuff works, but pretty much just use your percentages to check what you want to do with your guys here. I mean, no one really keeps track of what goes on here because you can't really check what your enemy is using, so you can't really check what you're going to use. So pretty much just go with like the best thing here. This is probably going to be a learning experience for me just as much as it is for you guys, so uh, we're going to see how this goes. Let's go with bottleneck, sure. Uh, and then we can probably just create a recruit to army thing. We can go with heavy infantry, light cavalry, and archers. I don't really know what the difference is between all these things here. It looks like it's really, really deep, but honestly, it really isn't all that deep. There are a couple of, um, bonuses and, you know, things for each other, but you can't really check what your enemy has 100% of the time, so... Yeah, I mean, you can check what units they have, but you don't know what tactics they're using, so you don't know how effective anything is. I, it's, it's really confusing. Anyways, uh, we're probably gonna go with the basic things here, so we're gonna go with five of these guys... We're going to go with uh, five of the principes, or principes or whatever, and we're going to go with uh, five light cavalry, which is going to be auxilia, apparently. And there we go, that's nice for our army for now. We can probably split it and do whatever we want with it for, um, you know, later on. We're going to assign a commander, um, we don't want him to be, we want him to be loyal, actually. Now, this is our guy who's right now, I mean, he's not that bad. Yeah, let's use our guy right now, because he's 100% loyal, of course. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's also our leader, yes he is. 
Uh, and then we can also go with an invention. Okay, right. So, uh, two inventions right off the bat. What do we want to go with? I don't really know, because I don't really know um, the whole thing of everything that's going so far. So, uh, I'm pretty sure, off the beginning, um, since we are getting a whole bunch of guys, starting experience would be okay. I could also go down with something else. I think I want to check the natural tax, because that's what we're getting the most of. Uh, yep. This expansion thing pretty much doesn't matter, our aggressive protection or whatever, because we get free claims as Rome. Uh, and our omen, we can choose a whole bunch of things. Now, I don't really like the way that religion works in this game. I'm going to start off with that. Um, you choose an omen, and it lasts a long time. If you needed something else, too bad, you should have picked something else. Um, that's really the, that's the, that's the depth of the mechanic. You just pick something, whatever you want. Um, like, the tutorial says, go with the Blessing of Fortuna. Uh, that's not super important as Rome right now. Um, I don't understand why that would be important. Uh, usually, manpower, research points, national tax, and discipline are like the four things you'd really go with with a nation like Rome. National population doesn't matter because you are not small. Uh, I'd probably end up just going with like probably national tax right now. Get a whole bunch of money because we're not gonna be able to go to war uh, immediately anyway. Because I'm pretty sure the Senate's gonna be mad at me if I try to do that. So we're gonna go with uh, this guy. Seems a little bit more loyal, so we know him. Scorn families, I literally don't know what this does. If anyone wants to tell me what that does, that'd be great. But, like, as of right now, I literally have no clue what that does. And, um, that's pretty much all I can say about it. Like, there's just, there's, I have literally no idea what that does. We're going to go speed for. And check out a couple things here. Um, not really much to do for the first little while, but we're going to do a little bit of a, a time explosion here. Let some things, uh, build up. At some point, we are going to get our claims. And you'll see. Oh, uh, we can also go with... As for my Puglia, I, I remember, I think I did this in one game, and they literally didn't help me at all. Like, they were pretty much useless. So we're going to say no to that. Uh, I think I called them in against Achuria, and, like, like they, just, they just don't do anything. Because we have enough vassals, and vassals are broken uh, in this game already. Which is something you love to see already, so that's nice. Uh, we also built a couple of tree reams, but tree reams are not the best thing in the world. Also, uh, right, our policies. Economy. Economy. This is something they don't even teach you in the tutorial, which they probably should. But yeah, always bring your, your maintenances down, because they don't need them, like, literally ever. Port maintenance, bring them down. We just bring them up. Taxes, uh, you can touch these if you really want to, but I don't usually ever touch them. And you can literally just, like, spend money to get points. Yeah. I don't I don't even know what to tell you. And there, there are no loans, it's just... <sighs> Spending money to get points, um, seems a little bit shallow, not gonna lie. It's not the deepest mechanic in the world. You're supposed to be able to be limited by these things. It's a strategy game, but it's not a strategy game. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Lucania. You guys over here and I'm probably gonna murder you so no anyways uh, so we could yeah okay so yeah Senate stuff okay so you guys don't really want me to go to war with like anyone which kind of sucks not even these guys so we kind of want to kill first and of course the tutorial doesn't tell you that either I don't like the tutorial in the paradox games like literally ever uh, which is why I went a regular go at Rome the first time before heading off to a let's play because I don't want to say completely useless or, you know, out of touch with anything that's going on here, so. Uh, but you know, yeah, there are a lot of, there are a lot of things that can be improved upon here. Um, it's probably going to be a giant let's play of me pointing out everything that could be improved and how to improve it. Um, just in case anyone, literally anyone cares. But I wouldn't say very many people probably do because Paradox is doing a great job already with a couple things that they're updating soon. Um, first of all, I'm pretty sure they're going to be changing, uh, what's it called? Stability is going to be different, right? Instead of just like hitting a button and getting plus one the way it is in EU4, uh, we're going to be able to hit that button and instead it's going to go between zero and a hundred and balance out at 50, which I don't know if I really like that system, but you know what? Sure. And we're going to say no to you because we're going to invade you at some point. We just need the Senate to like us better, and to get the Senate to like us better, we need people on our side. So, uh, we have a lot of people here who are cool and stuff. We can directly check who's saying no to this by clicking this button. So our faction, which is the Civic Faction, is saying, yeah, sure thing, go ahead. The military faction is at about 46%, and the support here is at uh, 55%. Everyone else doesn't really matter as much, because these two factions make up as much as this faction. They don't matter as much, they matter kind of-ish. Um, I wish we got a total number of seats that we have. 50 out of what? I would like to see that number, actually. How many seats are there in the Roman Senate? Uh, who knows? Does, does it increase? Does it decrease? Let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 50 times 2, so it's 100. Okay. Literally 100 exactly. 100 seats exactly. Okay, cool. Uh, that means... If we get the military to like us better... 
That would work out for me in every single way, yeah? Okay, so... Okay, so we need popularity to get anything started, really, in Empire to Rome. Um, or we could be friends with the faction leader, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So we need to be better friends with the guy in the military, which is this guy. Uh, friends with someone who has prominence is good. So if we can bribe him, oh, that would work, but also no. Um, also paying points, some sort of mana for bribing, it's not, doesn't make any sense. We should just use for the treasury or something like that, I don't know. Uh, boo, 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 boo. So is there anything we can really do here? Make friends is a, is a, is a good thing, yeah, probably. Uh, and then, you know, it doesn't matter when the next election is, because we just have to wait for there uh, anyway. So four years until the election. A lot, a lot can happen in four years. I kind of want to go in the other some things in four years. Okay. Wow, okay, so we get five tyranny, which is not really that bad, honestly. Tyranny doesn't do that much. Yeah, I'm not that sure. It's not even like the national treasury money. It's literally like the ruler's money. When your ruler is like a republic, then you just don't care about their money at all. I just, I don't understand that much. They try to make it sort of like a CK2 thing, I think. Maybe-ish, where people have like personal money and stuff like that. But like, when it comes to, to republics and stuff, it doesn't matter at all. Okay, so everyone likes gold. Okay, cool. So, yeah, you give a lot of your personal wealth, which is 174. Um... I mean, yeah, dude, I literally don't care, because it makes no difference. Literally do not care. Well, we're making a good amount of money in our treasury. Uh, okay, so we could get rid of 75 at best. Another another moderate might do fine. If he's friends with us, then he's probably going to influence the faction better. I wish it was more dynamic than just, like, getting... Here's a 20% bonus, honestly. Um, 56 seats. How is it still divided? Do I need 60% of the vote? Oh, and he wasn't even convinced to be our friend. Okay, so that's that's great. That's fantastic. You know what? I love to see that. So 56 seats, unless we have 112 seats now, which I doubt we do. 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 50, 100, 101 seats maybe? What do I need for it to become, like, undivided? I don't, I don't get that. Do I need, like, 100 or... 24, 24, 15, 17, 20. I don't know. Uh, fair trade, we lose a lot of men. Oh, okay. Mercantile faction is more likely to support our law changes. Okay. Right, so, show our laws here and we can change a whole bunch of stuff here. Although it's, of course, super duper expensive for literally no good reason. Since each of these things costs so damn much. Populist faction influence decreased. That's good. We want to keep that there because the populist faction is literally trash. They literally just cut, make everything cost 10% more power. So, game revolving around mana. Um, that's not great. Not great at all. Also, can I turn up the music? Where's the music menu? It's usually in the top right here. Or, uh, nope, nope, nope. Where's the music menu? Child was born. Okay, cool. Uh, a daughter's been born to the console, but that literally doesn't matter because it's a console. Now, where is my music? That's my macro builder. Message log. Capital. Is it literally just like this? No, it is not. Uh, I cannot for the life of me find the music menu. If there is one, actually. I don't even know if there is one. Because the very well might not be one. Usually there is in Paradox games, though. So I'm a little bit surprised if there isn't one. And almost definitely there always is. Alright, so, um... War. War, 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 war. That's the entire goal of this game. The first hour, you know, the hour-long special of every single new series I'd like to do, I want to go with a little bit of war. At least a little bit of war, you know what I'm saying? So, let's see what we can do here. Also, can we uh, import a little bit of trade? No, we cannot. Not there, but we can here. Cool. Uh, let's go with... Well, what do we really want from here? Um, I wish I could see, like, stuff from the entire province. Because, like, clicking on 7,000 different provinces, if you don't have a, a way to sum up things, um, then goddamn, that's just, that's terrible, that's literally a terrible thing to do. Okay, so, you guys have 
That's what, that's the research, that's the income. Okay. So trade route, we would want one well, local manpower doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. Happiness is fine, I think. No, you're unhappy. Okay, uh, we might want to go with citizens or free men being happier. And to do that, we can change that by assimilating or converting or, I don't know, doing random stuff. So can we get the, those free men or citizens? Okay, so, so can we get the citizens happier? No, we can't because we require precious metals for that or dyes. That's it. Okay, fine. Okay, what is there to import here? We could go with, I don't know. Olives, sure. So earn us 0 0.22 a month. Cool. There we go, we got olives in there. Nice. 52 seats for that. Um, over here we have 56 seats, and over here we have 56 seats. Let's see. Let's do a check of what actually matters with tyranny. National slave output increases in prison costs and execute costs. Decrease uh, multi government loyalty. Do I care about that that much? Not really. You know what? You know, you know why I don't really? Because, like, the, get, the stuff you get from war is actually just so much better than anything I possibly care about there. Yeah, okay. So you guys have 21 cohorts. We have 30 cohorts. And we could probably split it in two, but we're not going to because I don't really care. We're probably going to force it to the Senate, honestly, because I don't care about the tyranny that much. So you guys want some stuff that was earned at 0 0.5. You're both my subjects, I'm willing to give it to you because, sure, I don't care. Uh, that would give us 5% attrition, we should probably split it in two then. Give you another commander, because I don't want one commander being too powerful. So the name of the game here in uh, Imperator is apparently just a whole bunch of stability and instability. Stability versus instability. It's pretty much the entire game, uh, from what I can tell. Uh, sure, let's earn a little bit of money. Wait for this guy, because apparently you have to go back to full morale when you split a thing in half. I don't know why, but okay. Again, just, I don't know what that really does for us. Um... Is our ruler just? All oh, right, we didn't even pick our policies. Okay, I feel a bit dumb now. Okay, right, yeah, that's kind of important. No current idea. Uh, oh my god, I can't believe I forgot about this. Okay, so yeah, we all have armies for one of them. Oratory, we're gonna go with. Uh... There we go. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was talking about. Monthly general loyalty and admiral loyalty it means tyranny doesn't matter literally at all. Like we could go full tyranny and no one would be disloyal. That's what I'm saying about just like going ahead and crushing everything. And of course, there's a uh, ruler popularity gain, which is pretty important. Getting popularity is good. All right, so we can just wait a little while, wait for a couple things to uh, do their thing here, and we can just go and invade. At sure, yeah, just forces to the Senate. A little bit of tyranny. No one actually cares because they don't do that much. Again, primary culture happiness decrease, and that's the only negative thing. Uh, populist faction will be less likely to support you for changing laws. Okay, I don't care. You know, we can, we can probably gain morale over time, because you guys are not going to know that I'm invading you, so you can have, like, zero morale. We're going to go and invade probably just all of Etruria. That sounds fine to me. Doesn't really tell me which one it is, but okay, we're going to go with Etruria. And, uh, just click the button. No, oh, no, Etruria by five. Oh, 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 I don't care. Cool. Uh, so bring you in here, bring you in here. Just get the war started, because why not? Lone Naven. Oh, okay, okay, let's go with the maintenance things. Do -do -do -do. We just can go back to normal. Okay, cool. We're good. That's what I meant. Okay, there we go. Cool. You guys, who were probably at low maintenance as well, I can probably tell, um, are just gonna, like, walk away as well. So, nothing bad actually happens from this. Uh, technology speed, or national commerce income, national tribesman output. Commerce would not be bad. Maybe it would keep us above. Probably not. Let's say tech investment. Let's go with research speed, actually. Or technology speed. Sure, why not? We're going to go to, like, technology speed. Or with Ashuria, and that's it. And my life is super duper easy. Oh, yeah, and another thing. Well, two things, actually, because one, you can go around like this, which is literally... It doesn't need to be a thing in this game, but you know what? It's literally just for the flex. It's just for the fact that they have, like, topography on literally everything in this game. So it's cool, I guess. I'm going to keep it down... 
yeah, this, this is the default angle, so I'm going to keep it at that. Anyways, the other thing is, um, forts actually automatically capture enemy lands, which is, I feel a little bit, you know, I don't know, it's, it's not a huge impact on the game, but like, it's a little bit annoying, like if you're invading someone and you just get your stuff sieged down for like, no reason, you gotta sit there for a while to unseach it. Yeah, it's a little bit annoying, I'd say. Are you guys raising cohorts? Yes, you are. You raise a lot of cohorts, actually. So we have to go and crush those individually before they become too powerful. Like that. They're gonna go invade or attack, I guess. Uh, let's see how this goes. So the whole battle thing, I wish I could move this, but no, you can't. Um, sort of thing, yeah, okay. So 10% of me just versus bottleneck. I thought we were using bottleneck, but no, I guess it doesn't do that when you group back up. Okay, great. We're going to bring it down to a couple different speeds before. We're going to be able to make it? Okay, yeah, we're going to burn this battle, which is nice. And then the rest of our vassals can probably come in and see so much of stuff, which is nice. There we go. You're victorious. Alright, so you guys, apparently one of you is not using the bottleneck tactic, which you should be. Should be a decisive battle, apparently. We shall see if that is correct. We'll probably be fine. Uh, oh yeah, that's easy. Okay. There you go. No stack wipe, though. Apparently the only way to stack wipe is if they're actually heading back to a province and they have no morale. So it's kind of like a U4. Except EU4 stack wipes can happen um, pretty much instantly. I don't know if these sort of same-ish mechanics. I'm thinking maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. It would make sense if they would keep a couple of things at least. Um, oh, whoops, there we go. And they, the one thing I do enjoy is actually the fact that manpower is, you know, you actually tell you when you're when you're gaining and losing manpower at any given time, which is nice. Very, very nice. Also, uh, a lot of configuration. Okay, that's cool. I didn't know we had that. Still don't see a... Uh, Music menu literally anywhere around here, though. Although I do hear music, so I'm okay with this. I'm just wondering, is it in here? Settings? Audio? No, it doesn't tell you. Doesn't show you anything. Although, I can probably just, like, increase the audio music. There you go, it seems absolutely fine. Hopefully it's not too loud for you guys. I think it'll be okay, though. So we're going to invade Etruria and uh, maybe Campania. That's not Campania, that is Semnium, this episode. Semnium. Then of course we're going to have to go for um, Sabinia, because that's sort of like the basic thing. So our generals will not be uh, disloyal literally like ever, which is good. Although apparently the higher tyranny you have, the more it does decrease, interestingly enough. Okay, I'll keep that in mind then. I guess it's a little bit of a slider as to how devastating it is. If your tyranny is too high, then big bad things happen, I suppose. We can probably just wait for our vassals to siege everything down, because, well, they don't really matter. Our manpower gets affected, and we don't have to actually use any if they uh, siege everything down for us, which is good. Now we're going to move our tree rooms over, because it gives us a little bit of bonus. It is the exact same as EU4. Having this bonus here is important. Actually, no, if they don't have a port, then it isn't important. Import and haha, <laughs> get them. Okay, wow. Alright then, uh, you guys are saying you guys are saying, cool, cool. Anything else important to actually check here? Not really. Decisions maybe? Nope. Can't do anything here, although I would like to be able to do this. I don't know how to do that. Expanding the campus of Martius. Just costs a lot of money, I guess. Rome gets a lot of money or Rome gets oratory power. Wow, okay, so oratory power is probably more important at this point. And we also have government policies we can do here, right? So your governor policy is... Manpower in Fort Defense, and your manpower policy is... Encouraging Trade. Okay. That's interesting, because you can change those. I'm pretty sure your governor just does whatever they want. But you can change those, and for some reason it costs you... Tyranny? Like, you're literally just asking him to change his policy, and he's like, Oh my god, you're literally the worst person I've ever met in your entire life. How, how dare you? How dare you do this to me? Like, how... Hold on, that makes literally no sense. I should be able to just, like, ask you nicely, big, hey, can you change that policy? I would like to do something else different here. And be like, oh my god, you're literally the worst person I've ever met in my entire life, and you should probably go in dying and tell everyone about your tyrannical acts. Like, okay, that's that's great then. I guess I'll just die or something. I don't know. 
So yeah, I don't understand why that's a thing as well. And the fact that it costs a uh, whole bunch of oratory power as well. Don't get that either. Don't understand that. Okay, you guys are doing a couple of things I don't like. So we're going to have to get you to stop doing that, actually. Here's the speed so we can move a little bit faster, because it does take a lot of time to move in this game. I mean, like, a lot of time to move in this game. Let's wait for them to get locked in. Is someone going to get locked in here or no? Am I just going to be locked in here? Okay, there you go. That's a big fight. Uh, I'm going to see if anyone else wants to join in. Apparently not, which is nice. So can we get in there? All oh, right, because they get military access, but I don't because I didn't ask for it. That's not how this game works. Right. Uh, I was thinking maybe, hey, they have military access. Can I get through that? No, because it's not EU4. Okay, so we can grab. Uh, I don't even know what Diplo Rep does in this game. Um, I'm assuming maybe better alliances and stuff. But considering the fact that there are no major powers in the game, except for maybe Phrygia and the Seleucid Empire and Maria, it doesn't really matter that much. Egypt's a pretty big, pretty big power too. But yeah, I don't understand the rest of that stuff. Okay, uh, Fabricate Claim does not matter. Omen Power is a maybe. In fact, it would not be that bad, not gonna lie. Let's go with Omen Power. Because we can do it on things like, I don't know, converting pops and stuff. Uh, you're gonna say, blah, 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 blah. You would gain the following bonus of heavy infantry and discipline. Okay, cool. Sure, that works for me. So, you guys going to do something or just. Walk away. Guess you're just gonna walk away. Okay, that's cool. Oh no, you're doing something. Cool. We're gonna cut you off there. Oh, a nice gift from the Latin local power of, I don't know, someone over here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who that was. Britannia, maybe? Yeah, literally no idea, but it was someone there. <sighs> okay. I wish you guys would stop moving around so much. I wish I had access through here. You can just, like, ask, though, right? No, they, we cannot, because they hate us. Well, that's cool, I guess. Cast this bell eye on us. Oh, yeah, got that. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, okay. That makes sense, actually. We literally have a valid reason to go out and murder them instantaneously, so I, I guess I'd be a little bit upset about that, maybe. Uh, you guys want military access through me for what reason? Is that why you gave me a gift? Sure, I mean... Not really much we're gonna you're not gonna be able to do with that, but okay. We're gonna get you to yeah, go over here because we have massive attrition here. As I say that I slap more troops down on there, which is great. Oh, another gift from Lucania. Very nice of you. We're making a, uh, a good amount of money, in fact, for breaking even at least. I wanted that to move there. There we go. Hmm. I was confused. I thought maybe drag clicking like that wasn't very effective. Apparently, works just fine. Uh, gain free stability, and apparently, we will own the religious faction one favor. That works for me, actually. Now, the real question is can we increase it by one? Uh, no, we cannot, but we can in a couple of months. I don't know how long this thing lasts. Okay, you're ki you're kidding me. I thought it was like a U4 where you could wait a little while before going to the next thing, but no, it's like makes the angry sound of pausing. Okay, let's get the free stability like that, I guess. Okay, that's cool. That's totally cool. Not angry at all. Okay, so uh, I'm sure yeah, we're probably gonna take like a full annexation, probably to be honest with you. Yeah, we don't have to do much here in the first place. Uh, we're gonna go for no attrition actually. Actually, no, we're not. Are you at war with them? You are. Oh, dear God, that's disgusting. Okay, so you're at war in the Sabinian Etruscan War. So that means that Sabinia, or Sabinia, actually just invaded them. Okay, cool. At least I'm not alone in that front. Although, I guess it doesn't really matter at all. Can we ask them for military access then? Because they like us. No, they actually hate us, but can we ask for that anyway? Oh, right, it's here. Uh, no. Even though they would like to put us in a defensive pact, they wouldn't give us access. Okay, cool. That's totally understandable. This war is going to take ages, though, isn't it? Uh, let me do a time check. How far are we in here? About half an hour-ish. Which is interesting. A child is born to the console. Doesn't really matter. But that's fine. Yeah, I'm just going to let the Vassal Swarm do their thing, because we just have 
so many goddamn vassals for whatever reason, and I don't have to spend a diamond manpower if we put them in a, in a good location. Like right here, we should literally be spending zero manpower every single month. What we're really going to do, though, is... You know, we may as well be a little bit proactive here. Send these guys over. We're going to split four off. It's probably going to be archers, because, I don't know, archers seem like the right thing to do. Uh, create a new unit of... Four archers. Uh, now, the whole thing about, like... Bringing them out on a ship is a little bit confusing, because there's no button for... Embarking, is there? No, there is not. Also, we can create military roads. Border forts. Okay, interesting. Huh. Okay. But there's no... Surprisingly, there's no... Uh, thing to do here when it comes to... You know, uh, actually being able to go on a ship. Without having to go like this, out to here. Then selecting them. When it's done. And then clicking there. That's literally the only way I can think of. Or I can figure it out. Go grab someone random like here. Sure, you do that. So we're gonna lose a little bit of manpower out like this. We're gonna send them over here, across the seas. Uh, threat successful. Levantine regional power of Nebetia folded. Okay, war has been averted. Uh, av averted. Yeah. Okay, war has been averted. Very nice. Uh, there's actually a port here, meaning yeah, easy clap if we manage to land here, because that's just free supply. I'm pretty sure ports work kind of the same way they do in Hoi. Um, if you capture a fort, then you get supply. If you don't, then you have major issues. At least, um, I'm hoping that's how it works. Because other than that, what's the point of having ports that aren't on literally every single city? Maybe just for annoyance? Mm, maybe? For upgrading purposes? Who knows? But we can head off like this and just keep on going. Uh, in fact, we're going to go and maybe grab a couple more. Yeah, let's go and grab a couple more. Uh, let's go grab all of the heavy infantry. Or a couple, uh, a couple of them at least. Let's grab a one. And of course, there's loyal, there's loyal cohorts, uh, cohorts as well, which is interesting. Really, just makes splitting your armies a big pain in the butt. You have to pay off cohorts to be non-loyal to guy, or just you know, just kill him outright. That works too. What we can do, uh, things like that. Exiled armies, Legion 1 and 4. What do you mean? That is Legion 3, that's Legion... Doesn't tell me, but, you know, it's Legion something. Unit is in exile. Oh! You guys literally just annexed stuff that I had occupied. Didn't know that was possible. Great, I will be killing you soon, then. Wonder wonderful, then. That's, that's fantastic. That just makes my day. Wow. That is something that needs to be fixed, because I am certain that cannot be a legitimate thing. It just it straight up just can't be. It can't be. You know this, you know this land that I didn't occupy? Uh, can you just give it to me for free? Uh, sure, sounds great. Sounds sounds fantastic. You know, I'll do that immediately. That sounds, sounds great. <sighs> That's just dumb, actually. That's literally just dumb. Give me my uh, national commerce, I guess. Sure. I'm salty. I'm extremely salty, if you can't tell. Because that makes no sense. That's the fact that you cannot tell me if there's going to be a battle here when there are two armies marching towards each other. Oh, wait. You're not marching? Okay, maybe I'm just dumb. Maybe I'm the dumb one here. It happens like that sometimes. But anyways, uh, yeah, what's, what's even going on here? Like, he just took stuff that wasn't even theirs. Like, can I take it back for free? Who knows? Also, uh, the fact that shift-click doesn't give you all the cash and you have to shift-control-click makes me a little bit angry, but that's fine. That's a full annexation, you know, quote-unquote full annexation, because, wow, rest in peace this. Increase rank to regional power, cool. Uh, we will try and... Well, gross expansion doesn't matter, like, at all. We're gonna go with, uh, gain popularity, cool. Right then, uh, we're gonna head everyone back then. And there's no automatic transportation, which is great, of course. You know you have the, the makings of a great game when that's it. I should have it unlocked. Cool, it's the first Iron Man game I've been playing, so. I got Render Unto Caesar. Hmm, interesting. What is that, actually? It is just Conquer Tree or something like that? Toggle Outliner, uh, Menu and Achievements. Conquer City. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, first Iron Man game I've played so far. That makes sense then. Lack of governor, uh, governor in here. We can just give one uh, a random one then. Well, let's give him 
Someone relatively loyal. Sure, he's cool. Uh, news trade rights to the capital. Cool, let's grab a new one. No one actually wants to trade with me, though, because I am a terrible person, and that makes sense. Slow provinces in Korska. Uh, we can fix that, but that'll be a little bit costly to do so, because we have to do a whole bunch of religious power or trade power conversions and stuff like that. I can probably convert maybe Freeman. Freeman are at 2% because, well, risk of expansion, governor is Hellenic, not Hellenic religion, not okay. So the culture is the really big one. Does that make him happier? A little bit happier, not very much happier, honestly. Uh, there we go, three guys as well. And sure, does that make you guys happy ish? Not, not that much. I could convert you, maybe? There you go. Okay, that makes him happy. Cool. Let's convert you then. Cool, everyone happy? So, uh, less unrest then? Or, like, no unrest, hopefully? That's, uh, that's how the theory goes. If I re-click on this province... Okay, I'm at, I'm just literally at a loss then. Rest because, uh, war exhaustion. Uh, okay. Religious conversion and war exhaustion. Okay. Okay, I gotcha. Serving pops in Illyria. Why is that? Uh, because... Looted and the city population. Okay, so when it's not being looted... When it's done being looted, I guess we can fix that. Let's head you onto the boats, but we have to do this first, which is dumb. Head over like that. And then we're gonna move you over to, I don't know, here or something. I'm assuming you guys are on that ship. You're not on that ship. So what happens then? Do you guys just stop being moved to the ship at that point? Did I missed you? Okay, I did. Cool. An envoy from there, uh, they want me to uh, give them stuff. Uh, they'll give me money and I'll get less tyranny. Cool. I don't know how marble and tyranny work together in any sort of way, but uh, we'll, we'll go with it. So we're going to send you guys back over here. We're going to send you over here as well. And there's no attrition when it comes to that stuff, so that's fine. Now, war with these guys, everyone says, sure, let's go and murder them. Um, which sounds great to me. Though they are allied with Umbria and Vicentia, that shouldn't be an issue because, you know, vassal swarms are disgustingly broken in every single Paradox game. So we're going to bring you over there. And, ooh, everyone wants my stuff. Cool, let's go with, um, you guys seem cool. Get more money. Look at that, we're making bank. And, uh, yeah, the instant we get back, we're going to be declaring war because... I don't know. Oh yeah, silly me, I should have gone like that. Wow, I should have waited for it out here. Because of course I should. Makes 100% sense. Let's also change you into... Wild Leg or something, I don't know. Then bring you over there. Bring down the speech, because I don't want everything to like break and be super terrible laggy stuff. So all of you guys, group up. You're going to go with... Uh, yeah, Bottom Leg works for me. Uh, do you have any loyal cohorts? No, okay. You do though, yeah? Okay, so uh, four, co four cohorts lose loyalty for a lot of money. Now, Rome likes to uh, reward their veterans with a lot of things. Usually it's land, sometimes it's money. Um, the whole land system, I understand, would be terrible to manage, so I guess money works better. That's fine. Uh huh. I don't understand the reorganization thing. Reinforce speed uh, and morale recovery. Okay, so when you retreat. The best thing you should do is when you get back to territory, reorganize. Okay. Interesting. We have a whole bunch of unit objectives, which can be, you know, independent of, out of their volition. Okay, yeah, so we can do a whole bunch of stuff here. I, I remember a lot of these things, like, actually don't do anything good, like, at all. I think, I, you know, it would be good if you are, like, constantly getting raided by barbarians up here. That would make sense if you have, like, guys patrolling the border like this-ish would be okay. But it's generally not that important. I don't believe. So we're basically just going to be like raffle stomping these guys. If we can. But what's the time looking like? We are at 8 to 10. Meaning it's been about 40 minutes-ish I'm thinking. So we're going to call in everyone. We're going to go for this war. Uh, take Achuria because you know, again. Great. Oh look, aggressive expansion, oh look, tyranny, ah, everything's bad, woo, it doesn't matter. We're gonna go and, maybe just crush him if we can.
They're gonna come in, and we're probably gonna win anyway. Because, I don't know, Rome and broken stuff. Also, you know, low morale is another thing. Oh yeah, well, rest in peace morale. I wish that was a stack wipe, but nope, that's not how stack wipes work. However, okay, no, there's not gonna be stack wipe there. Election soon, cool. Um, we're at war, scorn families exist. I don't think they really have a massive impact, but that's cool. We can spend pretty much nothing on anything useful. Which, you know, once again, is great. Uh, we could maybe... Well, I mean, money's fine. We could build barracks, but guess what? You go to the macro builder, and you're like, Oh, I want to build something here. What does it do? I don't know. Psh, you know, I, I wish Paradox would tell me something. You know, is it important to build something here? Well, gee, I don't really know, to be fair. Uh, local population growth, zero, plus 0.06%. Hey, what's the regular population here? Bleh, I don't know. God, I wish that was like a thing. That shouldn't be... Mm. If you have a macro builder, you gotta like f like finish the macro builder, please. And thank you. Ah, okay, wow. Mm. I feel like I'm making more of a, an angry video than like a Let's Play, so I, I apologize for that. I'm gonna try and be less angry. And all those games is fun. There's so many things. It, it, feels, it feels incomplete. It feels like a Paradox game, but it feels like an incomplete Paradox game. Which, to be fair, is probably, you know, most of them on launch. Um, but you know what I mean. It's not, it's not like just that in of itself. Let's go with something else. Do we want more money? Uh, we're pretty much fine here. Research points, maybe? Uh, not super important, because our civic power is not super great. You know, discipline? Sure, we're at war. But once we're out of war, it's not important at all. And we can't do anything great. So, uh, you guys are an actual fort. Like a fort kind of fort. And our siege timer is... 40 days. Wow, okay. That is a lot, actually. We're fighting uh, three different guys, so... You guys, you guys, and you guys. I'm pretty sure we're at war with. Which means we can annex all three of you, right off the bat, which is nice. Also, a title is... Uh, we need a censor. Okay, cool, censor. We're going to grab a, uh, I don't know, sure, this guy is the guy we had last time, and he's pretty good, but we can also grab this guy, he's better, and there's really no issue with that at all. So to influence, I guess expansion, chain, discipline, national tax, health, national freedom, or free man, happiness, sacrifice of the gods cost, and omen power. Okay, cool. I need to trade ports on the capital, well, I do want to grab some of those, all of those would be great. National slave happiness and local slave happiness, although we don't have that many slaves. Oh, we actually do have a lot of slaves, not gonna lie. Okay, let's go with uh, olives then. Cool. The slaves are happier. Uh, they're not very happy, but you know, they're happier. Uh, actually, everyone's happy. What? Okay, uh... Average happiness of 98.4. How are you telling me they're unhappy? Oh, because the base happiness is 100. Okay. I, okay, I understand that they're slaves and like, they're not happy about it, but you know, you just gotta shut up every now and then, okay? And so we gotta go in here, because that's actually a fort, so we gotta go take that down. Bring up speed for wars, because vassal swarms and brokenness. Because like, you know, sure, why not? Bring you into there, and that should be done. Oh, uh, you guys are gonna try and cross the border into there, which is gonna be interesting. Caldas born, okay, interesting. Again, not super important. You're gonna try and siege down some of my stuff. Yes, you are. Okay. Or maybe you're not. Again, okay. Sorry, families. Right, so uh, when you are being literally just taken over, uh, I guess your problems start to starve while they're being completely destroyed, which makes a little bit of sense. Also, are you really gonna try and... Oh, that's not good. Can we get some help here from you guys? Yes, thank you very much. It's going to be a big old war we're going to need some help with. So we're going to need everyone here to help out. It's going to be probably the defining war of this whole thing. No, oh, please, 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 please. Okay. We're back in business. This is literally everyone though, isn't it? Ooh. Okay, everyone except for you. You could have been useful, but you know what? This guy makes it. It'll be all okay. Please make it. Please make it. Oh, yes, we have gained most of the men here. It's a victory. Morale is, uh... Oh, it's looking close. It's looking very close. But I think we might win this one. We are victorious. Okay, nice. That was extremely stressful. Like, that was a level stressful I don't think I've ever experienced in my entire life. 
Wow, that was crazy. Okay, and you're definitely gonna have a whole lot of... Well, you're gonna have two lower cohorts. I thought that battle would have brought you up to a good number, but no, we're good. We're, we're actually pretty good. Can wait for our manpower to go up a little bit. But we are relatively, you know, okay. Invention, can we get more manpower from anything? No, we cannot. National Chasman output, though. Hmm, okay, so that... National Tribesmen produce uh, manpower as well, so that might not be bad. Uh, Diplo Rep. I mean, okay, yeah, that's good. I mean, morale recovery after a battle is pretty important to grab. So we're gonna see how much manpower we can uh, suck back into the into the field. Uh, one thousand eight hundred seventy-five will reach the armies this month. Wow, okay, that's crazy because that's a lot more than you usually do in uh, in EU four at any given time. So that's interesting. Uh huh. Okay. So can we get over here and just like keep siege some stuff down? I guess that worked for me. Siege uh, speed three, just because although things are gonna go a little bit slow, um, it does make my life a little bit nicer. Uh, at least my frames a little bit nicer. I really want them to finish making this game so that it doesn't chug your frames or your CPU as much. That's been one of the major complaints: is how stressful it is on on high end PCs. And all, all my PC is not like. Literally twelve thousand uh, dollars. It is still high end, so uh, I am one of those con concerned people as to why this is a bit of an issue. So once this is done, maybe we can. Oh, it's actually getting pretty close. Can head over here, so we can head over here still. Or you know, we're gonna actually wait there, so we can head into there when those guys are done, which works just fine for me. So you guys are not going to receive reinforcements until you're off the fort, am I? Well, you're going to get a couple of reinforcements, but apparently not that many until you're off the fort. Which is fine, I guess. We're not going to get any, you know, 7 or 14 sieges probably, because we're not literally the AI. So that makes sense, it's fine. 14% done there, 28% there. So wait for all the times of takedown. We can also, like, check scores and stuff. This is, you know, equivalent to the Good old great power section, I'm pretty sure. It's pretty much the exact same thing. Also, there's a country called Kush, and I am extremely intrigued now. Well, you know what? We're going to have to play at one point. Actually, whoa, this is incredible. Okay, yeah, it goes along the Nile. That is incredible. That just looks pretty, actually. Looks pretty incredible, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> wow. That's actually that's actually really cool, though. Not going to lie. Just like seeing all the provinces makes me extremely happy. Also, of course, you have the pyramids and all that stuff. Pyramids of Giza. You have the... Temple of, I want to say Anubis or Halicarnassus? No, Halicarnassus is not there. Is it? I don't think so. I don't think so, but another building here. Maybe it is. Uh, no, Halicarnassus is in between giant mountains. That can't be it. Just some sort of temple or something I'm, I'm supposed to know, but I don't. Then all stuff down here looks really, really cool. Look, this is actually really nice. Wow, I never thought that having 7,000 provinces would, you know, make me so happy and yet so upset over the fact that my computer's just dying. Literally just crying for help. Um, but you know what? It's cool. An unwelcome gift. Okay. A loyal servant of the state, yet a man of questionable aesthetic talent, has commissioned a statue in honor of Quintus Fabius Rulian Rulian Rulianus. Okay. I'm not going to lie, this guy looks like I would, I'd buy a statue of him. He looks cool. Like, bro, look at that goatee. That's nice. That's some nice stuff here. Um... Wait, hold on. Citizens gather from far and wide, and when the unveiling takes place, Gnaeus Flavia simply stands, arms folded, with a terrible smile blasted across his face as the crowd collectively withdraws in abject terror. Yikes. Okay, so he thinks it looks nice, but it's just it just looks terrible. Oh, God, wow. So I could say it's hideous and lose popularity. Or I could just say, uh, demolish it at once, and he, d he is not very happy about that. Well, we're gonna we're gonna gain a whole bunch of popularity from like all the stuff we're doing here in the first place, so it doesn't matter that much. Um, let's go some some things with our macro builder here. I guess marketplaces wouldn't be bad. Uh, you know, I wish I could figure out where to put them. You know, that'd be great. Of course, it's also oh my god, there's also all this stuff here, stuff being made and how trade works. And oh boy, I can't wait to figure out how trade works in this game too. Okay, so local tax and all that stuff. So to figure out how much tax income you're getting, it's based on a lot of stuff. Mostly uh, slaves are apparently the base income for tax. Okay. So the basic income for tax is slaves. Gotcha. Understandable. Right. So the more slaves you have in an area, 
more base tax you have. I can only assume so with 12 here, our base tax is going to be 0.94. With 6 here, it is 0.36. So in Rome, build either training camps, fortresses, we get slave happiness out of this too. You know what? Let's go with building another granary because we get slave happiness. Makes them happy. So if you have unhappy slaves, the best thing to do is actually just build a granary. Because it gives a flat bonus to slave happiness. Okay, gotcha. When it comes to other things... Well, where does local manpower come from? Local manpower comes from a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, so you can see some of the stats here. How to build things. Like, it's still not super descriptive. Like, you have to click on each individual province. That kind of sucks. You know, it kind of does. So, you know what? That's pretty okay. Tax income. 0 0.36, 0 0.35, 0 0.28, 0 0.14, 0 0.18, 0 0.26, 0 0.20, 0 0.18. Okay, so there's some things that are obviously better than others. But you wouldn't really know it from looking. 0 0.28, 0 0.35. Okay, let's build another marketplace there. God, that's just disgusting. To not be able to just click on the way the way that EU4 handles it is so much better. They, they could have used the same system and had no issue with it. So I'm I'm kind of confused here. If this isn't done right now, we're gonna get crushed by the incoming army. Okay, yeah, that's not good. I have to bring this guy over probably. Yeah, I was about to say I knew they're gonna do it. I knew they're gonna do it. Bring everyone over. 14k reinforcement might be useful. Actually, it will be useful, most definitely. If we can get him there in time. Oh, God. Let's get him there in time. Please, please, please get him there in time. Yes, we are fine. Uh, whether or not we win the battle is uh, debatable. But with the extra, like, 5,000 men, I'm assuming it'll have a little bit of an impact. And it looks like I am correct. We're starting to win the battle instead of lose it, which is good. Finally, we might be able to take this fort. Hopefully. Hopefully. I can only imagine. One thing I'm very happy about is the uh, the new animations they've done for things. They have really outdone themselves with the fighting animations. I think it just looks really, really nice. Uh, can we move one guy out of here? Yes, we can. Let's move the smaller guy out so we can actually reinforce. Well, this guy. Oh, there we go. Can keep on going along there. Alright, so we're getting close to uh, invading actually pretty much all of our war enemies. Which works for me. Uh, let's go for speed 3. I guess they're going to reinforce, which is fine for me. Actually, can we do this? So for how long? Oh, so we toggle it off when you're done. Okay, cool. Gotcha. All right. Oh, and they have more. Ah, oh, another animation. Okay, nice. I, I like this, actually. So it's like beckoning soldiers to come. Like, come on, guys. We need to reinforce here. We need to get things done. Everyone's like, oh, okay, sounds great. So we're going to keep on going. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Right then, so every single month you guys gain um, plus 25% reinforcements, which is nice. Even though we're running out of manpower, we need you in the field, if nowhere else. So we're going to run out of manpower by the time we're done with this whole giant massive conquest we're doing here. But it'll be done, which is nice. Very, very nice. We can't really ask for manpower. We can't, like, spend money on manpower, right? That would be, that would be too dumb. Like, there are some dumb game, things in this game, but... Buying manpower isn't one of them, at least. Thank God. Yeah, that would be immeasurably stupid if you could just literally buy manpower. So, if you can buy everything else in the game, uh, I have a mixed opinion about that, but... Yeah, they're not doing something very dumb here. Uh, can we actually get rid of a couple of veterans here? I would pay a lot of money for them. But getting little cohort, uh, cohorts, I'm going to have the worst trouble in the entire universe pronouncing that every single time I say it. But if we can um, fix that, that'd be great. Let's go with this, because we can get more manpower out of it. At least, in theory, we should be able to get more. More pops, maybe? There we go. 228. Yeah, so it's a little bit more, but it's not very much. Not very much more, but uh, even 8 is, is better than plus 0. So we're probably going to let the vassals keep on doing everything, to be honest with you. I mean, they have manpower. 11,000, 7,000. Yes, part of me. Uh, yes, you are. Okay, cool. So you have eight thousand. We have three vassals, right? Or we have yeah, we have four actually. So one, two, three. 
Hold on. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, right, you guys. You guys have 7,000 manpower. Okay, so you guys literally have more manpower than I do at this point. And we can turn this off, actually, because we don't need it anymore. We're going to let the manpower sort of, like, I don't know, die here. Uh, so we're going to be reinforcing men, and we're going to be getting 150 attrition this month. Gotcha, so we can probably increase the speed as well, because we're not going to be doing anything. Just sort of looking at the screen, the other thing ticks down. But it looks like we are getting really, really close to that end of, uh, you know, game time. So we might want to end up doing is actually putting a pause before we finish out this whole, ah, uh, whatever we've been doing here. Incursion, or incursion? Yeah, that's the one. Great little things we've been doing here, and uh, is that another invasion from here? Is that really it? Are you guys actually just invading Ancona and Urbina? Okay. Or Umbria. Mm-hmm. So you guys are just gonna, like, get 0.3% war score and just annex all the stuff? Yeah, okay, sounds good. Yeah, that's definitely how that works. I'm certain of it. So when it comes to uh, countries like, uh, like Umbria or something like that, let's go to Umbria. Can we just, like, literally just full annex and you guys are fine with it? Really? Like, the whole thing. Like, okay, yeah, I'm talking about the whole thing here. You guys are, like, just fine with... Oh, okay. That's cool, then. Uh, good, more Romans. Okay, so we can lose uh, local unrest in... Oh, okay. So we can just turn, turn them Roman for 100 civic power. Which, you know, of course does create a couple of issues, but... The fact that we're negative civic power at this point. But that's actually really good, because it's less unrest. Actually creates a whole bunch of good things that happen here. 20% of the population becomes Roman. Um, you create a lot of unrest. You don't, but you do. Okay. Converting and assimilating. <sighs> okay, so can we... Create governor policy here. Can we just, like... Culturally assimilate? Sure, let's go with that. That's going to make life a little bit easier, because I'm pretty sure assimilation is the best thing to start with here. And uh, when we're going to be done with this... Uh, country over here. That'll be great. That'll be great and fine. Uh, just until we stop losing men will be appropriate. Can we grab this? No, we can't. Okay. I wonder if we can go over here, because you guys have zero tree rims, but you do have a port on your capital. So, if we do that, that'd be great. I am a little bit weary, though, because when you send out tree rims, things, like, bad things can happen. Like, a lot of bad things can happen. Uh, there are a lot of pirates in a lot of places. Okay, so populist faction influence. We're going to go with new. Lose popularity. Loses position from the government. Um, bar from office. Loses loyalty. Huh. We're going to have to go with this one. So many bad things happen from the first option that we're pretty much going to have to go with this one. And I don't like that because uh, populist factions. Ugh, okay. Hate that. Hate that a lot. Volcanic destruction. A large rumbling sound is the only warning our people receive before Vesuvius erupts, spreading large amounts of ash and lava all across Neapolis and the nearby provinces. Most of the most of those living in the area have little to no time to prepare themselves for the danger, and there is a large number of casualties and destruction across the area. Neapolis gets entirely buried by the volcanic ash and lava from Vesuvius, leaving the area almost uninhabitable. Some people have started wondering if this is some sort of punishment sent by the gods if we have offended or insulted them in one way or another. We must take care of the few that remain. Alright, so uh, Neapolis, I'm pretty sure, is... Yeah, it's pretty much near Pompeii. So when, you know, we have... Everyone knows about Pompeii. But what happens there, the city gets, like, covered in ash because of the volcanic eruption from Vesuvius, which is right here. So Neapolis is right next to it, but it's, like, owned by us. So that's, you know, sort of the uh, similarity there-ish. But I think... I think it might be time to put a cut in here. It might be time to put a cut in here and then move along to the uh, next episode. Next time I see you guys, um, it should be in a little while. I kind of want to capture this fort and then do it because, you know, the first two minutes were really just me doing pretty much nothing. But, um, okay, so oratory advantages are done. Cool. Martial advantages advance. Okay, cool. Uh, military tradition, cool. All right, yeah, uh, that's a thing we can do. Ah, oh, we see our stats here. That's actually really, really nice. Slave and efficiency. Well, Navy's discipline for city. Uh, cool. That's actually really nice. All right, so we see a whole bunch of stuff here. Let's show the traditions. So, heavy infantry, better, uh, or light infantry defense. Let's go with the discipline, because the discipline's always very nice to have. So that's a good. Uh, so Neapolis is having its own issues. Like, the city's, 
like legit started. Like it's actually just dying. So what is this govern? Uh, we need to import like food actually. Like we really gotta import import food if we can, because you guys are having like massive issues. I mean, like big big issues. <sighs> okay. Starving city. How can we fix this? I don't actually know to be honest with you. I, 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 like, I have this understanding that there must be like a food value, but I don't see it anywhere. Making my life significantly worse. Local manpower, local tax, and local population growth until the end of the game is pretty much garbage. Sure this is done. Okay, so we're going to have to put in cut in here before we go in and just like invade everyone else. So this is Corbett signing off. Hope you guys had a fantastic time. This is like our first episode of Imperative Rome. So of course it had to be an hour long. I mean, that's what I do for every series. So anyways, hope you guys had a fantastic time. This is Corbett signing off and as always have a great day.